Hello and welcome to the Essence of Knowledge meeting which is for the participants of the Essence of Knowledge program. So today we are going to start our meeting with a test of Neelam. The questions are, first question is how is knowledge gained? The knowledge is uh, gained via uh, direct experiences and uh, logic. Uh, whatever uh, information the senses perceive, uh, it is it it impresses on the memory and uh, uh, it forms an organized structure which is meaningful and that becomes the experience and uh, through logic we uh, examine the whether the experience is valid or not and in this way we gain knowledge uh, number two is uh, which qualities of a seeker are congenital a seeker uh, who has a, an inherent curiosity an inten intense desire uh, to know for knowledge is inherent. It is it is a congenital quality, and uh, also uh, um, I think intelligence, rational ability, critical thinking, uh, all these are also congenital qualities uh, in my opinion. And uh, there are other qualities like uh, determination, discipline. Uh, good communication skills and all, all those can be acquired. Uh, number three is, uh, how much proof does knowledge require to be called knowledge? To be called knowledge, uh, there can be only two proofs. I think um, if it uh, is in the direct experience and it is, uh, it, it's, it is in sound logic, uh, then it can be called knowledge. What causes agnosticism? Uh, agnosticism is a state in which uh, after gaining all the knowledge, a seeker comes to know that there is nothing more to know. And uh, from the state of the known, he enters the state of the unknown. And uh, this is a very blissful state. And uh, it is a very peaceful state from the knowledge to the unknown. And uh, the seeker comes to know that there is nothing to know and uh, it is unknowable. So uh, the end of knowledge uh, leads to agnosticism. Uh, number five, which aspect of the existence is limited? As such, the existence is not limited. Existence is unlimited. Uh, but the experience aspect, the illusion, the experience aspect of the existence is limited, I think. What will the experiencer experience at the end of existence? The experience does not experience, the experiencer does not experience anything. It is just the witness of everything and the end of existence uh, is an invalid question the existence never ends the existence is eternal it is always present so uh, this question uh, has some ignorance about the existence and the experience uh, why are experiences of different people different when they are essentially one no, the experiences are also one. The experience is also one, actually. There are no many experiences and no different experiences. Uh, people are also experiences. Uh, Self-knowledge is destruction of self. True or false? Yes, that is true. The knowledge of the self. Uh, here, uh, the self is meant by the individual, I assume. Uh, and the knowledge of the self, that means the knowledge of my true essence, destroys the I in the self, which means the individual. So uh, when I know my true essence, then my individuality is lost. The I is lost. Abiding or awareness means being not me. True or false. There is no me actually. Uh, abide. It is only the experiencer. Abiding uh, or awareness means the knowledge 
that there is an experiencer which is witnessing all the experiences and that is i am that so uh, it is false abiding and awareness is uh, not being the individual it is being established in the experiencer number 10 what is more natural and obvious than oneness i think there is nothing which can be more natural than oneness oneness is the most natural state uh, it is my, my uh, natural st state there is nothing which can be more natural than oneness yeah yeah thank you guruji that was all from my side thank you very good very good attempt by neelam and uh, you get uh, 7.5 marks out of 10 which are very good marks and you are pass so now you are you will go in the step number 4 of the program where uh, the awareness practices are to be learned and you will report for uh, 3 months or 12 weeks about your progress so very quick answers very short answers and only one answer was wrong and a few answers were little bit incomplete but overall you have a very good knowledge thank you so much guru ji i want to express my gratitude and reverence to you for giving this knowledge and uh, giving this knowledge in such a simplified form which is so easy to understand i have never come across uh, such an easy to understand way In which you have presented, and uh, I'm also amazed how this knowledge, I got this knowledge, uh, without any effort, without doing anything, without going anywhere, without spending anything, just while randomly sc scrolling the YouTube, I came across this knowledge and entered this program and got this invaluable program. Thank you so much, Kuruji. Thank you for your guidance and your kindness. you're welcome and yes it happens when the time is right the place is right without any effort you will get it so i'm very happy that uh, you found it useful and you are progressing well in your future also you will progress more things will become clear to you and obviously you will get established in awareness if you uh, sincerely complete the other steps and uh, congratulations yes all the best so now we are going to discuss the questions answers for the benefit of other seekers for the audience in youtube where these meetings are published so today we had very interesting questions and one or two were really difficult but uh, the difficult ones were answered uh, correctly and uh, the easy ones got A little less marks. This is slightly surprising. So, number one was how is knowledge gained? So she got half marks here, half mark because she told the means of knowledge and the process of formation of uh, connections in the memory and so on, which is perfectly okay. So that's why she got half marks. But there is uh, another answer to this, which is also described in our program, which is not so technical, which is not technical answer. That first you should have a curiosity, you should have a very deep desire to get the knowledge, and otherwise nothing is gained. Second, you need a teacher. Third, you need some qualities. Fourth, precise definitions, step by step approach. discipline approach you see these are all prerequisites and then comes the means of knowledge and then the formation of connections and logical inferences happens so this is the whole process according to my point of view which was given in uh, your program that uh, is the complete answer in my opinion but she jumped directly into the final stage where the uh, the person is completely logical already and everything is perfectly done and the knowledge is gained ideally this does not happen so we need to prepare the ground a little bit and then we deliver the final knowledge ultimately nothing will be gained you see a little bit trick in the question little bit just to complete these kinds of questions 
you should always answer do not worry about gaining anything the process is important not the gain or loss there is no gain and by the way there is no loss also some people will call my reduction of ignorance as the gain it's perfectly okay because at the time these words do not have any meaning my ignorance is gone but am i going to call it loss am i going to call it gain no there is no me to gain or lose anything so in the end no gain or no loss but in the beginning we start like this you will not gain anything why because there is an ignorance right now in the seeker or the student i am going to get a lot of knowledge something like this or all my uh, suffering is going to end or this thing will happen that thing will happen i'll progress or i'll do this i'll do. eventually uh, nothing like this will happen that must be the experience of many people in the program anyway this creature is satisfied and that is what matters isn't it if you are satisfied that yes yes i did something i am progressing spiritually that is what will happen if the program is successful or if this path of knowledge is successful for you but uh, whatever you imagined will not be gained so to complete the answer this is even the extra bonus you can say like this sometimes if the person is ready to hear if they are not ready to hear okay we serve some sweet dish in the beginning number 2 which qualities of a seeker are congenital and she got full marks because yes curiosity and uh, the desire for liberation the desire to approach a guru to gain knowledge and so on these tendencies are seen to be already present and because they are present the person or the seeker becomes spiritual or seeks some people can have a different opinion that nothing was present that person was an ordinary person ordinary human but somehow they came to know about spirituality somehow they came to know about knowledge and all and uh, the curiosity arose in that person the desire to liberation the desire for liberation arose in that person because when you hear that you are bound obviously you will want to know how to get out of this bondage so gurus are always telling you you are bound here you are bound you are ignorant so <laughs> obviously the person will want to know what is the matter with me so, that is also possible isn't it that is also possible there will be one in a thousand case like this however almost everybody gets suffering almost almost everybody uh, is faced with these questions everybody is faced with ignorance and everybody knows that there are gurus and there is something called spirituality some kind of madness happens on this planet because many things are happening one more but mostly 99.9% of these people simply ignore it the curiosity does not arise in them although it is everywhere isn't it knowledge is everywhere gurus are everywhere books are everywhere how is it that Uh, one out of thousand pays attention, and that is why uh, learned people and uh, great people they classify it, it, it as congenital. There must be something in that person that he got attracted to path of knowledge or any path in the spiritual tradition. Not everybody else. Anyway, this can be uh, subject of arguments, subject of debate. we don't pay too much attention what is congenital what is not we say if you came here by grace like she said i just came here yes <laughs> we all just came here so this is grace itself so what we say sometimes that if you came here now take advantage of this opportunity that you have the qualities now now take advantage of it do something about it now don't worry what was congenital and what was if the guru sees that there are some qualities that are not well developed then something can be prescribed like she named some things like communication ability and so on even in, it includes a little bit of intelligence and logic also because we are not born with these things they need to be taught but if some things are strangely only found in some people and no reason can be given for it and so we say they are inborn and guru knows what is happening nobody else so number 3 was how much proof does knowledge require to be called knowledge she got half mark here because she said 
I think uh, direct experience and logic is all required. That is the proof. Yes, actually, uh, that is called proof for evidence on the path of knowledge. The direct experience, your own experience, and the logic as understood by yourself is evidence on the path of knowledge. And that's why she got half marks. However, the question is asking how much proof? How much? So those who are in legal profession. they know the meaning of how much probably they also don't know <laughs> but there is something in justice and uh, this field of justice how much evidence is required to hang somebody let us say or to uh, free somebody from the accusations i think there are many um, lawyers in our program in our group also on the path of knowledge because it's very logical for them so they are attracted to this path so how much and uh, again you will find different views here there is something called uh, necessary and sufficient proof which the judge decides what is necessary and what is sufficient it should be enough to uh, remove the doubts that is how it is defined and even if you present more and more evidences then it does nothing to establish it but if you remove something from there and a doubt arises now in the mind of the judge or the seeker the seeker is the judge here what is true and false so that will be called insufficient evidence so i know this uh, question is asked first time in our history of the program how much because we always tell you what is the evidence but we never tell you how much quantity of it so uh, the general answer is till you are satisfied you are not the body let us say this is the claim now how many arguments how many experiences and how many logical conclusions do you want to get satisfied sometimes one is enough for some people one one experience is enough it is changing and the person is satisfied but the other will say changing so what i am the changing bodies i am all the bodies now more evidence is required here more logic is required more arguments will be given you can see this happens in our scriptures shankaracharya says i am not the body and then the opponent says look there are evidences that i am body i am nobody without the body so on and then more evidences are given it goes on now when do we say that the knowledge did not happen the knowledge was not gained when it does not matter how many evidences you produce the satisfaction does not happen for the opponent or for the seeker also seeker is not really an opponent seeker is seeking isn't isn't it seeker wants the evidence so even after providing necessary and sufficient evidence seeker says or the opponent says no it is not satisfying me my doubts are not cleared in this example the seeker can still say no i still think i am the body and there we let go ah, okay okay this is not working here you will not get evidence here we say like this because ultimately we know that uh, evidence cannot be produced of anything except we can only remove the ignorance we can only demonstrate that whatever blind beliefs the seeker had are not logical not according to direct experience so ultimately satisfaction is the criteria for how much you want do you want to go on for your whole of your life or are you satisfied with two or three sentences what if a doubt is left it is okay it's fine because it, doubt is better than blind belief this is the mantra in path of knowledge <laughs> if you don't know something you are in a good position actually compared to your previous position where you where you knew wrong things where there were wrong notions not knowing will not cause suffering but assuming something wrong definitely it will cause suffering so we also don't bother too much with evidences have you seen your wrong beliefs yes sir enjoy <laughs> go ahead nothing will be known anyway so the evidence on the path of knowledge is always negative everybody knows this by now i think it's called negative knowledge nothing is presented in favor of claims whatever claims are there are simply that which remains after the negative evidence is presented now these things are difficult to understand and those who are in the profession of uh, lawyers or those who are judges those who are in um, you can say secret services <laughs> or scientists 
who are after evidences in isn't it scientist is looking for evidence they only they will understand what it means so we do not do not explain this necessary and sufficient conditions so much to newcomers to those who are just joining the program and they are not told anything about it because we don't want to tangle them in this issue of what is not what is how much evidence is sufficient ultimately you need to decide and you will see by yourself how much is necessary so i know this was a difficult question but she got mostly she got it right mostly half marks so that is why the test is important that is why discussion on the questions on the tests are important because we touch something some details which were not discussed in the program to keep the program easy and beginner friendly like she said it is very easy yes it is very easy but don't think that advaita or non dualism or the path of knowledge is easy it's not that easy especially if you dig deeper in there it seems easy in the beginning <laughs> i finally know what i am congratulations but uh, use your logic more and examine whatever you got easily so easily use it more dig deeper and for that you have your rest of your life so this is my advice what causes agnosticism full marks and the knowledge that there is nothing to know and all and whatever there is is already complete and perfect as it is it is not not finding any answers agnosticism is not a situation where you surrender because you cannot find any answer no agnostic position is i have found every answer and ultimately they are all negative because the whole is already whole and complete there is no knowledge here there is no ignorance here there is nothing to know here and i am that whole and complete existence what will you know after this so just like she said it is a peaceful position not a gain or not a loss it is very difficult to describe these things in words so you will know probably neelam already knows when you're not even interested in knowledge you're not interested in debates you're not interested in telling anybody what is knowledge what is not as perfect position you are in perfect peace now number 5 which aspect of the existence is limited and this answer was wrong so probably she said my existence is not limited probably she said there is one thing which is limited which is experience because probably in your uh, program i said somewhere that existence is experience experiencing itself as limited experiences <laughs> it was said somewhere maybe because it's the very beginning of the program but what happens when you uh, explore the experience part there are two aspects in the existence experience and the experiencer there is no third it appears as two not even appears we actually slice it into two this is the mental activity that does it that this part is experience that part is experiencer but it's not like this so even anyway when we divide it into two and see the experience we see that it is also unlimited it appears to be limited that which is manifested he is called experience this definition comes a little bit later because actually it is given in the beginning but you will not be able to understand what is manifested so when we when we examine when we analyze this thing what is manifested we see that there is almost infinite potential it can be manifested in any way so we do not see any limit of the experience it ends here because that limit itself will be an experience so it was described in your basic analysis of experience then it cannot be limited secondly there is no time so usually the uh, end of experience is understood as end of experience in time but since there is no time or this is uh, something which is practical concept not real if it cannot end in time then where where will it end when will it end how will it end because there is no when there is no where there is no how for the experience ultimately we say no it's not limited it will appear as limited that is also an appearance when we investigate we do not find an actual limit of something which is manifested then we discover that it is me i am the one who is manifested and i am unlimited 
because this is not an object which can have boundaries or limitations or anything so existence is unlimited already so its aspects will be unlimited although they can appear in small uh, parts it is only an appearance like human life or any events in the existence any objects in the ex- existence they appear as if they are limited they have boundaries like objects or even the thoughts and emotions they start and they end so it looks like that it had limits but uh, this whole river of experience is flowing since eternity even though this human being will not be able to directly know it but the good news is we will never find an evidence of limited existence and since it is unlimited it is found in two aspects everything is unlimited Finally we can say there is nothing limited and there is nothing unlimited it is simply potential in the emptiness so these concepts of uh, there being aspects there being divisions there being uh, limits they all become meaningless and here the intellect also becomes meaningless because uh, there is no point in proceeding after this there is no intellectual gain after this so this answer was probably wrong and uh, it is it was very confusing number 6 what will the experiencer experience at the end of existence so she got half marks here because she said the experiencer will not experience anything is not experiencing anything something like this but then she said that there won't be any end of existence that's why she got half because that is true there is no meaningful way to specify the end or beginning of the existence which you have already done in the basic analysis of the existence it is not meaningful to say there is an end or a beginning or even a boundary that starts here in the place or an end here in another place there's nothing like this these concepts are not applicable but there are more um, problems in the question there are more problems so the the question is unfortunately <laughs> very confusing i mean it is asking about the future so the first thing you should answer about such questions especially at the level of non duality because we are talking about the existence which is non dual and that uh, don't talk about future there is no future is there a future no and then all the questions related to the future become meaningless they become invalid including this question what will happen and then you don't need to tell that there won't be any end you simply need to tell there is no future as applicable to the existence it is timeless non object it is me it is the experiencer the question can be dropped now at this time then the second is uh, the correct sentence which she told that there is no end of it there is a third answer also which is perfectly valid whether it is end or the beginning or the middle the experiencer will experience it experience itself isn't it beautiful answer <laughs> no matter whether you think it is time or space or uh, anything else any other notion of limitations the experiencer will always experience itself that is what is happening right now also there is no uh, possibility of happening anything else if it is non dual you need to first prove this that it is non dual existence there are two aspects experience and the experiencer the experiencer is witnessing itself in a illusory way illusory forms they appear is it is itself and this will continue forever if you think you know it is the end as yes, the same thing will be there <laughs> you think it is the beginning is same thing that is called experiencing in our program we have given it a special word experiencing it is simply another point of view of saying that it is non dual timeless existence so anyway attempt was very good number 7 8 9 totally right answers so yes why are experience of different people different when they are essentially one Her answer was right that uh, people are experiences they are not having different experiences they have different kind of knowledge in their minds about what is being experienced isn't it what is being experienced me only existence itself so it is one only that which is being experienced from different points of views is one so once you know the definition of the experience that which is manifested the manifested aspect of the existence then how many can it be one only yes there are different points of views 
we know there are different points of views because they are able to say so that i experience this i experience that and their sayings are different their words are different in this way the whole is limited not in the way of manifestation in the way it is known <laughs> in the way the manifestation is known is limited fortunately we have tricks to pass that bypass that limitation also we can know the whole at least we can remove the ignorance about the whole so yes these things that you call people will say something like this here the experience is different there it is different you are saying something different i am saying my life is different i am different you are different your life is different. this itself is an appearance in the whole sometimes we give this metaphor of dreams where there are many people they are describing their own experience in the dream how many dreamers are there did you import other dreamers into your dream that are having different experiences no <laughs> that whole dream is an appearance very strange kind of appearance there is an experiencer there the rest of the story is obvious there is one which is appearing as a dream and the dreamer simple number 8 self knowledge is destruction of self yes i don't need to say more than that uh, only your notion of the self is destroyed not the actual body mind or the experiencer or anything that you consider as self nothing is actually destroyed but your notions your uh, ignorance about it is destroyed so they are still there as appearances but they are there whatever you called as myself still there nothing to worry that's why i said there is no loss there is no gain <laughs> it's a business where there is nothing is gained but nothing is lost the sum amount comes out to be zero always and that is true that uh, whatever you thought of as self is gone then you can choose to call the experiencer or the existence atman or brahman as self which is a personal preference there is no rule that you should call it like this there is no law that in advait that says that you should always call yourself as brahman or existence or whatever in any other language they call it no you are free to do whatever you want call anything so the example of rose is this isn't it if you name it as some other thing it will remain rose that flower will not change into anything else so names don't matter now what is self what is not self hardly matters no debate is useful no position is meaningful remember this this will bring peace nothing else number 9 abiding or awareness means not me her answer was satisfactory yes because you see it is being the experiencer awareness is defined as you realize you are the experiencer not any kind of experience that is abiding or awareness abide in the knowledge now you want to call it not me it's okay isn't it just now i said call it anything not me me only me <laughs> hardly matters as long as you know what is not me isn't it and that's why guru is needed if you get tangled into words of different kinds the guru will destroy them also number 10 what is more natural and obvious than oneness so th- this is the question that uh, is surprising isn't it i was saying that some questions are really surprising that when people answer them correctly i am surprised how is it possible that newcomer could answer this question and this last question is like this pleasant surprise and she said <laughs> that uh, whatever is already here is most natural that is oneness only this is surprising answer that means her understanding is almost complete understanding of oneness this question is testing whether you understand oneness or not right now right here whatever there is is oneness everything is imposed on oneness and that which is imposed on oneness projected on oneness can be called unnatural some people will say no that is also natural yes it is natural but we are now uh, trying to distinguish we are trying to find what is most natural what is not so from the whole point of view yes meaningless what is natural what is unnatural nothing like this but here we are uh, trying to know something what can be called most natural what what is most obvious some people have this kind of complaint that oh you say it is one you say it is oneness right now i don't see it it is not obvious for me how can you say obvious it is the most difficult thing in the whole program i cannot see oneness how many years will it take for me 
to get established in oneness there is the situation of uh, there is the condition of ignorance there must be something some doubt some question something is not clear presence of some unfounded beliefs there must be something that's why the person is struggling seeker is struggling and when i say no it's the most natural what else can be there yes as soon as i ask this question what else is there tell me show me the two this is how we say it in advait show me the two and now those who have done the program or those who are studying under a good guru non dual guru non dual teacher their eyes will be opened by this question tell me what else is there you can do this exercise yourself some day try to see why it is not obvious why it is not natural because the mind will say like this the mind saying this mind doubting the oneness is most natural also but then you can counter it through direct experience you can ask your mind or whomever is confused show me the division is it not oneness now and after meditating contemplating for 30 seconds one minute two minute that person that seeker will not find the two it is guaranteed it can happen that he will or she will say that i can't find the one because nobody can find the one that is also true isn't it no experience is the experience of oneness it is not an experience so <laughs> at most there will be a condition where no there is no two but there is always a but and that but means now peace is coming silence is coming now there should not be more buts there should be silence it is possible so however you are most welcome to examine the oneness every day every minute every hour if if you want that is not called awareness by the way in our terminology uh, that is that is called uh, natural samadhi sahat samadhi whatever it is it is that condition where you are already established where you are already there no amount of doing no amount of knowing no amount of uh, meditation or yoga asana nothing will change it it is a very simple realization that there are no two end of the story some people will say i want to know what is one what is one it is not what where it is where it is not where now here the guru will struggle to even point you cannot point to it it is that which is right now then drop your questions and notions and whatever you thought about it is not to be found by thinking now so this final step is taken by grace here the guru is also you can see surrendered <laughs> guru says what can i do to show him the oneness nothing so the guru can take you to do duality the guru can show you who you are who you are not what you are what you are not there is duality nobody can show you oneness you reach there by grace that is why your program does not have any methods or tricks to become one not possible it's not possible give up surrender come in silence the only thing this creature this human being can see is that there are no two so is it one is it zero is it infinite is nobody knows this is the bottom line unknowing remains agnosticism remains plus we also know that these questions are also meaningless nothing is there to know just be that which is it is right now right here most natural most obvious there is nothing more obvious than this there is nothing more clear than this because here there is no ignorance yes but there is no knowledge also sometimes we give this metaphor of uh, window and glass the window which is dirty you know what do you call glass window if the glass of the window is dirty you cannot see past what is happening so the guru comes and cleans it that is just like cleaning your intellect cleaning your ignorance now you can see what is happening isn't it where am i what am i how is this happening how that much scenery can be seen and the seer can be known but uh, still there is a division there is glass although it is invisible it's, it's not obstructing the view it's, it is still there but what is oneness what is most natural even the glass is removed the window is removed now the scene and the seer are one it is not clean and it is not dirty it is not actually there so seeing that there are no divisions is getting established in oneness and this seeing is not a thought it is not the, not a method it is not logical rational trick 
of some kind if you are not doing this don't worry is kind of unnecessary to do that because it's already there just realize this much there is no glass there is no window check if it is there you are in deep trouble that means the program failed <laughs> there is no dirty glass that can even a child can tell glass is clean now he has the knowledge who can tell that there is no window and there is no glass who will do something for that because that which is not there who can remove it it is already like this there is no glass and there is no window is already the condition now what will remove it so whole of the path of knowledge is like this only nothing can be done usually because already whole and complete nice beautiful harish is saying oneness is the only state at all times is the ego that too in the waking state which experiences separation and after knowledge kind of shuts up leaving the already natural state come into the foreground and this is also oneness whatever you described is simply an appearance and the oneness should not have any weight that should not be given any importance what is happening here i know it's kind of difficult and the language will take you away from the oneness silence will bring you into oneness check so the, here ends the questions and answers so we'll end today's satsang here and thank you everybody for joining today and congratulations to neelam